Hey guys, and welcome to part two of our Broodmother Bitucational. Um, before we get into it, we need to address something. There has been a small nerf on Broodmother from when we have recorded part one to now, which is part two. So I need to make you guys aware of that, that the hero is uh, slightly worse now, or it is weaker in some aspects than it was before, but the hero is still very strong. And I will still cover uh, the aspects, the post landing stage aspects that you want to look for and the item builds. And I'll explain you why and what and how. Um, but first of all, let's talk about the changes real quick. Spin web. The Aghanim Shard no longer reduces the web charge time. So the Aghanim Shard, I mean, it had this weird effect where it lowered the cooldown by way too much. It shouldn't even do it in the first place, but it did that. They lowered the lifesteal from the insatiable hunger from 70 to 40 percent of a one so that's a lot that's one of the most notable changes of the patch uh, level 15 they reduced the, they took away the cooldown talent and replaced it with a web recharge time so um you still have something useful but the cooldown talent was very strong and then they lowered the spider damage talent from 18 to 15 so overall um brood did receive quite heavy nerfs um in this patch but the hero is still the hero is still good especially in games where brood is good the hero is still crazy strong um so with that being said i think um we're just gonna go straight into it i'll try to find you guys some good examples of where and how you can learn like quite a lot so here we have the first game that we're gonna look at real quick so quick reminder this is post-patch Broodmother, so this is after the nerf. Uh, I was going to look at some replays from before just to show the map movements, but sadly those aren't downloadable anymore. So we'll try to make the best out of what we've got. But this, anyway, is one of the games out of the newer patch. So I don't think too much has changed with Brood. Of course, this is way worse. You can't man up as much anymore. So I think in some lanes it may be good to play more on the W and the E, so AK on the web and the Silken Bola. You help your post 4 with this to like harass the enemy 4 at uh, the enemy 5, or maybe you go on the carry together. I'm not fully sure yet. Um, so I think you guys basically still have to experiment with that. In some games, it may also be viable now to go like a 2-1-1 into a 2-2-1 at level 5. I think that's okay too. Because the second level of this spell is actually fairly strong now with 20% more lifesteal. So you get 50% more lifesteal basically with a higher uptime. So that's not too bad. But um, for now, as you can see, you can still play Brood in the same way. Similarly, just that you have a little less resistance when you fight the enemies. But let's just skip ahead. In the early game, not much has changed. So everything is the same. Um, we're getting closer to our level 6. So we're going to start to take over the enemy lane. And this was one of the games where I actually wanted to try a different build. I'm queuing up a Midas because it was a hard game in terms of what to itemize for. Yeah, they have Sven. So I can go Auras, but it, I don't know, it felt weird. I think a pipe would have been good in this game. So if you want to go the normal build, this is probably a decent pipe game against Viper, Rubik, and the Doom. I think that's fine, especially because Sven's game wasn't as good. But um, let's just think about the movement. So we take the top tower, right? The top tier one. Now, ideally what you can do is that if you can easily take over their mid tier one, you can go ahead and do that. Otherwise, you can go top and force the glyph. So here... We're gonna play into the jungle. Like once you take this over, you wanna start to branch out into the mid lane and maybe get one or two more webs on top. So here, what you can see, I'm gonna pressure the top tower. I kinda wanna force a glyph, just to like force some rotations here. I'm gonna go on the edge a little bit to try and force some stuff on him. Sadly, I'm a bit too low on mana. He just hit six when we go on him, but it's still a lot of pressure. We nearly kill him, we force him out. We took a third of the top tower, so this is pretty good. In the meantime, the other play we could go for is the mid play, but this is kind of okay. If we can now stack up some spiders, you know, we can try to go on top again. We try to force a glyph, we keep farming out the jungle, we can spread our spiders as well. In the meantime, the mid tier 1 fell, so we can keep playing here now. Try to pressure this so we can get the tier 2. They TP, we TP the Nature's Prophet. That's a 9 minute tier 2 tower with Broodmother. Like, I think the first time, so it kind of depends on the game. I think in a lot of games this move is very good, especially if there's a move about to happen here. But if everything is free and nothing is happening, I think attacking the tier 2 can be great. 
because if they glyph and you have a siege, you can either tank for the siege with your spiders, or the second play you have, you can force the glyph, put the spiders out, wait for the glyph to end, put the spiders back on the tower and pressure, because now look, at minute 10, we are pressuring their tier 3 tower already. It's down to, this is 80% life or whatever. But now, the thing is, killing this tower doesn't do anything, right? Killing this tower doesn't do anything until you actually take the racks. So, once we take this over, like once you take the tier 2, I don't think you want to play much for this area. You just want the outpost and now you, that's, at the latest this is where you go mid. But the tier 1 is already dead. So I can still just farm out their entire jungle and try to go to the mid lane. So here you can see I'm already, I'm running, I'm starting to run towards middle. It's important also that you have sentries. You need to buy your own sentries if your team isn't doing it. Because you need to deward the jungle. In this case, the Willow is doing it, but fine. We run over, we get a quick kill on the Rubik. Now we want to play mid top together. We also soon, we want to take Roshan, right? It's a big strength of Broodmother. Uh, you can proc Roshan, you can proc the Lincolns, you can put Silken Bola on the Rosh. And it works on Roshan. Your spiders deal way more damage on the Roche. Of course, you have a lot of HP regen. You also have life steal, which means you can tank it very easily. Here, I don't see too much going on. And since the Sven is dead, the only reason I am actually hitting this tower is because the Sven has died. Which means they have no one really to deal with this. Actually, Sven and Rubik. Because Rubik Fable is very annoying. So yeah, we get to chip this down, which isn't amazing. But for the circumstance of the game, it made me do it anyway. So the reason why the Ags is cool, or what I've seen some people do with the Midas Ags, is that you scale very well into the game. So if you do feel like trying out some right-click builds, I think this isn't too bad, even though this doesn't make you a right-clicker right away. It just means with the Ags, you're going to be very global. And also, the Aghanims kind of replaces your boots, as you don't really need boots, as the Aghanim Scepter gives you more movement speed. So here we have a fight in mid, which is kind of like, whatever. Uh, the fight was kind of over. But I, I come in to, like try and clean up a bit which is fine and now we're just playing this area we're pressuring them and eventually we're gonna want to look to Roche we force their tier 2 glyph again I think we're currently talking about Roche so that feels good and I think to be fair there isn't that much more to this game that we uh, currently need to look at we can maybe look at it like one or two minutes so now here you see we can go Roche so especially when you play Radiant after you take the tier 2 the objective should be to take the outpost, finish the mid-tier one if you haven't already, maybe pressure a bit, and once you control all of this, you need to look to Roshan. Whereas if you play Brood on the dire side, you want to take the tier one, nothing changes, right? We want to take this tower first, slowly take over the jungle, and now we decide if we go to the enemy tier one mid, or if we pressure the tier two. This is going to depend on what heroes they have, what heroes we have, where we're going, and where the heroes are positioned. But when you get to the point where you eventually want to end up taking this tier 2 tower, it's important because of the outpost, right? So you get map control. So eventually you take this tower. Now you do one of these two things. But eventually when you take this tower, you now take the outpost. And now you slowly want to migrate your webs onto here. So basically the brood game plan, it's the same. Just that eventually, like you eventually end up with the same thing. You want to do the same thing no matter which side you're playing on. If you're playing Radiant... Take the tier 1, take the jungle, eventually you take the tier 2, you take the outpost, and you slowly migrate that pressure into wave clear, and then you want to go Roche. On Dire, you do the same thing, just that you have to flip the map at some point, meaning that you take the tier 1, you take over the jungle, you take over the bottom tier 2, you take the outpost, but now you need to move the webs towards here so that you can eventually do Roshan. It is important because Brood is very strong at taking that objective, which means you need to make use of it. If you want to be good at Brood, if you want to make the most of the hero, that is what you have to do. Now, like, there isn't much more to this replay, really. I'm looking to buy a Shiva now because it's great against the heroes and I want to play on, like, my spell damage and stuff like that. But I think in terms of this game, I think that concludes it. I'm going to show you guys another game in terms of the movement and also the stuff that we want to go for in terms of how we want to play the hero. So here we actually have another replay. So remember, I'm actually just trying out a lot of different builds because I know that the pipe into Bogarty Grease is already working. As you guys could see from the first video where I touched on those item builds, they're very strong, and that is what people have figured out first in terms of Root Mother. That is still very, very strong, but we need to also be open-minded to other item builds. So uh, here, I'm going to show you guys a different build, and I'll explain what I did. Also, in terms of items, I need you guys to try and listen to the things I say in the video, and then you want to try to make sense of it, right? In some games, it is very good to go for auras, but it's also okay for you guys to try out different builds. 
What's most important with Broodmother is to understand the concept of the hero and the movement that we need to do on the map. Because the item builds will change every now and then, right? Depending on the meta, depending on uh, what we need to achieve in the game, which items are good for this specific scenario. But the movements of Broodmother and stuff like that, they don't really change. We need to just make sure that if we need specific items to make the moves that Broodmother needs to do, then, well, we need to get those items. But if otherwise we're free to itemize as we want, then we need to buy items that are good for the game. So we're going to skip ahead of the laning phase in this game because it is not that important. We are playing Brood against Troll, which is a very bad matchup. It is one of the best carry heroes against mine. But again, we're able to win the lane, actually, slightly, which is very good for us. So, again, we get level 6. We start to pressure the bottom tier 1 tower. We creep skip. We take their bot tier 1. It's great. Now, you see a completely different item build. I'm going for a Vessel. Why am I going for Vessel? So, I feel like that our late game is severely outclassed. And I don't really like auras in this game. That's why I'm actually skipping aura, the aura build. So, I think I'm giving myself a higher chance of winning this game by trying out a different item build. Even though I'm going an item build that isn't very familiar to me on this hero, I still feel like it's giving me a higher chance of winning than as if I'm going Pipe and Greaves. Because first of all, Pipe and Greaves is not good against Timber. He will one-shot my spiders. Uh, Pagna doesn't use auras that well in the sense of that if he gets stunned by anyone, he's probably going to die no matter what. Uh, Bane doesn't use auras very well. Uh, Ursa with Auras is okay, but we don't have any good late game. And I feel like if I buy Vessel, it's very good against Troll's ulti. It's very good against Timber. Yeah, I mean, we already have Pagna against Troll. But still, I deal a lot of magic damage with this hero. Don't, uh, like, don't forget that. And I'm already, like, aware that I want to build a, a Dagon eventually to combo with the Decrepify. So I'm going to go for an Urn. It might just require us to play in a specific way later on in the game. Because we need Vessel charges and so on. But yes, we take the bottom tier 1, and look how I'm kind of like leaving this wave already. I missed one creep, but it allowed me to kill a jungle camp. Now you can see me already like starting, I start to put webs around the map. I'm putting more webs bottom, and here I know that my that the voice fruit is coming. But look, I have already split my spiders. All my weak spiders are here, all my strong spiders are here. So he killed all my weak ones, and that is absolutely fine with me. Now, I don't have any vision on me, right? But I sent a ward and a sentry on the courier to deward this, to ward and deward this cliff, so that I can see this incoming movement from the enemies. It turns out that they had a ward and sentry here, which means you should always, you should get like two or three sentries nearly at all times, I think. Here I just try to go for a small pressure play on the hoodwink. Um, so that's fine. Here, the reason I get to dodge this gank is because I'm aware and also because I have this ward, so. The Void Spirit and the Morana, they're wasting a lot of time. I'm trying to split my spiders up a bit to, you know, like, scout around. So we're already making a lot of space. Even though we're not, like, getting that much done, it's it's fine. And also, currently, getting to mid is pretty hard. Like, if my team... Because the thing is, the enemy hero is already playing here. And my mid laner is a Pagna. And their mid laner is a Void Spirit. So it's hard for me to... It's hard for me to get through this area right now without my team coming. And if I remember correctly, I told my team that they need to come here because otherwise I can't get to middle because they're just they're just blocking my way, right? I can't just run through them. And if I send my spiders on them, the void spirit will just insta kill them. Like here, I'm just like making more time again, you know? Like this void spirit is playing super aggressive. He's using all his spells. Imagine I have a hero here, then this guy's just dead. So in this game, I can't go to the mid-tier one right now. If I have puck, it's very easy because we can coil or I can bait a bit, but my mid hero has no stun. So I'm just chilling here for now. I'm trying to apply pressure. I'm scouting the high ground. So the enemies are actually playing pretty decent right now. We feed some spiders here, but it's not too bad. So at this point, I want to get my vessel and then try to play with my team, right? So we're getting closer to it. Whatever, we're actually getting very close to it. Sadly, our team is dying mid. I'm starting to place some more webs into the mid lane. We have the vessel completed. I'm drawing a line bottom. I want my team to come to me because now I can send spiders to the mid tower, or we can try to attack the bot tier 2 together. But I don't really like attacking the bot tier 2 together, unless we're smoked. Here, I'm scouting mid again. I'm putting my spiders on the tower. I scout two TPs. They're going to use all their spells again. We lost our spiders, but the mid tier one is nearly dead. Now the Pugna can probably finish it with blast, or maybe he dies for it. I have no idea. <coughs> so anyway, I have Vessel, so I just... We don't need a team fight to happen, I just need a fight to happen where we kill one hero and I will be so, so strong. But here again, remember, 
Bottom tier 1. Push in the lane, take their jungle. Now, tier 1 mid or tier 2 bottom? That's what we need to look for. Fine. But here, the problem is we're taking these fights. We don't kill anyone, so I don't get a vessel charge. Both my cores die. My leader dies. Not great. I'm dealing a lot of damage, but nobody really ends up dying. They push us back, which is not great. But now we need to regain control of bottom. And I need a fight to happen with this vessel charge really badly. Because I need... Uh, I need this guy to die. Like, uh, the Timber will die to Vessel. You know, he's still far away from Yules. Here, I have Vessel. I put it on the Hoodwing. I put my E on the Hoodwing and my ult. Sadly, we end up dying, but it's fine. We're just going to keep looking at the potential of the game, okay? And how we move on. So we go back bottom. We want to push in the lane. We still need to eventually, like, try to take over the bottom lane and then see how we do it. Because we need to play together. Like, eventually, Brood wants to connect with his team because the hero is very strong. Like, with 3k gold down, but I think if we go together right now, we're still very strong. So, let's see here. They force Glyph. Fine. I think we're playing a little too aggressive here, but it's it's okay. Let's see what happens here. We go behind the tower. We just use all of our spells. Marana dies. Great. Because right now, when you are playing Brood in a game where your spiders maybe aren't as good, or maybe you don't have as many spiders, remember that your spells did a lot of damage. This is 380 damage nuke. And this is 160, this is 500 magic damage combined. You also deal a lot of damage right-clicking with this spell. So look, we get to kill both of their backliners. Sadly, our team dies, but remember, we don't need to focus on our team. We want to play well ourselves and try to make use of what we have. So here, we're going for a Dagon. Nice arrow by the Murana. We end up dying. Fine. We TP back mid. And even though we're 5k down, I still know what I want to do with my items. I want to just eventually... I want to take long fights. I want to use both my spells, my Dagon and my Vessel, ideally on anyone that's stunned or on anyone that gets the crappy fights, and that's totally okay. In this video, we're not gonna go too much on, like, the, this pipe build and so on. I might, I'll try to find one more, one more video where I do do that. So eventually, we do end up with the bottom tier to tower, which is great. Uh, Roshan has died, I guess. We had ages earlier on the Ursa, which is amazing. And here, look, we, I think we get to kill the voice for it. Dagon, we hit him, we throw a Vessel on him, which is great. And we just get to secure our game plan. Look, we split our spiders. They're following us, but we're still making a lot of space. And here, we just zap the guy again. Like, eventually, you want to make space, but then you want to play with your team. Here, the troll is around. Timber TP's in. We slow him. We ulti him. We have Dagon ready and Vessel. Let's see if we can kill someone. Look, we kill this guy. It looks great. Like, we're recovering the game super hard. By the time Roshan gets close to respawning, we should be looking to spread our webs into the top lane. The problem right now is that our webs are pretty low, so we cannot really waste that many more on bottom. And again, pressuring this tier 3 is very useless right now. We need to work on other things on the map. Like, usually what's important about getting on this map is to get, to get this lane push in, take the towers, take the outposts, but now you flip. Because eventually you need to secure Roshan and you want to contest the enemy triangle, right? So here, this is why we're working towards the mid lane. And now we need to start saving some webs so we can take over the top side. I'm gonna use one web here so I can like farm the triangle and shit. We take a fight here. You know, we just zap them up again. We have two more webs left. Roshan is gonna be close to respawning and we're, we've actually recovered this game pretty well. Here again, we can take another fight. This probably wasn't as good. We throw a lot of spells on the timber. But here, he dodges my ult. I still have the Dagon ready. Dagon him, ulti. We get to finish him, now we finish him. We have Vessel, we play on range. Look, you know, this looks great. Now I'm going Dagon into E-Blade and like, look, eventually, we end up losing this game because I think we make quite a lot of mistakes. Not necessarily us, like myself, but the way we play as a team and like people die with our buyback and shit like that. But look at how strong this actually looks like. And I'm not, I'm not gonna say that Dagon E-Blade is in every game build, like not at all. But like, look here, suddenly I zap this guy, he loses 1k HP. Now I have spells left, I see the Marana, I use my E, I use my ult with the crab, boom, it's like 800 damage, into Vessel, and he's dead. Like, you know, we're doing great. And we have a lot of long-range spells in our lineup. Ursa is also not a hero that commits all the time, he has uh, his shard, he has his ulti. Here again, we're looking for more, I think this is fine. Okay, I think we're gonna look at one replay now real quick, where we do go the aura build on Broodmother. Alright guys, so we already watched this match a little bit in the part one. We stopped at nine minutes. I just wanted to drag in a game real quick where we do go the aura build. So we watched this until nine minutes in the part one. So let's pick it up from there. So, 
We do end up taking the bottom tier one at around nine minutes. The tree end is being slightly annoying. or Well, not really. He's just, you know, trying to delay this the best he can. I'm just making sure that I cannot die to some random Lena gang right now. So here, this looks pretty good. We take the bottom tier one. And now what do we do? Branch out to middle and branch out to bottom. You know, have the webs ready for both. Split your stuff up. I have a sentry here. I want to check the high ground. This looks amazing. I sent myself another sentry so I can potentially have a look at here or here depending on where I think it's possible. Here, I want to push in the lane again. I'm going to pressure the Treant. Had I saved my spawn spiderlings for the kill, we probably would have killed them. But either way, we forced the guy out, which is the main point of what, what has to happen. Pressuring the bottom tier 2 is not very good right now because they have Sven, who will just go here, and they have a Treant. So look at the line I draw. The line is to middle. I'm saying, hey guys, I want to slowly branch out to the mid lane. I think in this game it makes more sense to go for a pipe. Yeah, they do have a Sven again, but the thing is I have a Shadow Fiend in this game who's very use. He really uses the aura as well, as does a carry axe. And honestly, Rubik isn't too bad either if he's allowed to steal a few more spells. So they pushed in the lane a bit, so now I need to play slightly safe. Because as you can see, once again, it's not that easy for me to just branch into mid like this. It depends on how what the map is looking like, right? So I'm sending my spiders to push up bottom. I'm slowly making my way to middle. I'm also getting closer to the pipe, which is a pretty big timing for us. And here, not too much happening, but I'm just going to send some spiders on middle. I see that this lion is coming to defend the tower, but I don't think he really understands the strength of my hero. So I just sent my spiders on him. So Kambola into spiders, try to split them up, use the ult for the last hit. We don't need to defend towers with Broodmother. The way we defend towers is by attacking their towers to force their attention towards us. So here, uh, we take their mid-tier one, which is great. <clears throat> now we try to go back to the spot lane, which is all the way pushed in. So we just... And make sure that we always stay in the trees. We want to stay safe. We need our spiders to do the work. And here, to be fair, my spider senses were kind of tingling. Because look at top. Nobody's top. Nobody's middle. So I didn't really know what is going on here. But like, if we look at this, I was very aware or like I was pretty certain that they may smoke on me. Like... Nobody pushed bottom, then it took so long for him to show mid, nobody's top. So here, I stay in the trees, I know that they're smoke ganking me, I keep very good positioning. So now they smoke two of their heroes, they are four people bottom, but they cannot get anything done with this play. We successfully dodged their gank, because, you know, I just, I just felt it. With the map positioning and what's going on on the map, so very well done. We get to dodge the gank, it's great. I actually decided to go for mech over the pipe. Because it makes me more tanky. Uh, now that I know that they skipped away from bottom and that they're like all kind of top because this play just happened. This now opens up for me the chance to take over the bottom tower. I force the glyph. I put my spiders away. I should have pushed this a bit faster. Not sure what I'm doing right now. I should have pushed that faster. Put my spiders back on bottom. Because the only way they're allowed to death bot right now is if they like TP the Sven. Tree and armor is not enough. But either way, I think I said that glyph is down. So I want to take the bot tower. So we're going to do that together. We need to deward. We do that. We send spiders on the tower. We split them up a bit. And I think we get to finish it. Yes, we do. So now, same story as before. Take over the bottom tier 1. Now take the jungle. See if we can go mid tier 1. So we did bot tier 1, jungle. Mid tier 1, back off. Now go bottom tier 2. Now take outpost. And now we're going to look to flip the map again. Why? Because we need to play for Roshan. It's important for our lineup. I'm getting close to Greaves, which is great. I'm even TPing mid because I see a fight happening here. So if I didn't have auras, I wouldn't feel comfortable TPing here because then I'm just a brood. But now, well, I'm a brood without spiders, but I still have Silken Bola. I still have my ulti, but most importantly, I have a mech for my team and we're already 5k ahead. I don't need to be a super strong hero here. I just need to show my presence, use my spells and have mech ready for my team. And I can still push bottom with my spiders, which I think I did a little bit. And now, since I'm around, I got some spiders from the Doom kill. I can tank a bit. I can put my Silken Bola on Roshan, which gives us more damage. And I'm giving us HP regen and everything with the mech. And now we get Rosh. So we did it perfectly. We didn't even need to go all the way here and use webs. I was just able to TP mid because I have mech. My team was fighting here. And it was very simple for me to, you know, flip the map or 
put myself in the right position on the map, which was great. And now I think I'm going to start playing top. We're going to go for more auras because here I have heroes that use auras very well. We have an SF lineup with an Angel, so he's super strong. He feels great right now, so we want to keep that ball going. You know, we don't want to stop him from feeling great, of course. We're buying a Vlad. So I think our item build's very good. Pipe is not that necessary right now. I think Mac does the job. Right-click damage plus lifesteal for my Shadow Fiend with his Aegis. And now we're chilling around mid. I'm going to look for a Lotus Orb. Just anything that's good to keep the ball going, you know. Just keep the ball rolling. Make my SF as strong as possible. Give him everything we can. We're going to farm the triangle because we took the bottom tier 2. Now we took the mid tier 2. So now the next objective is to hold the triangle, take the top tier 2, keep the lanes pushed in. That's another thing you can do with Broodmother. You can just send your spiders across the map to like push out some waves even though you're not there. Like right now, if I want bot to push in, I could just send my spiders there. Or if we're playing bottom, I could send my spiders here to push this in. But uh, all in all, I think what's most important for Broodmother in like the mid game is for you guys, or after the, after the laning stage, is for you guys to understand what is my first objective? How do I take it? How do I go from there? And I mean, we have explained it a few times now with after the bottom tier one, like how we branch out. We need to check if we go to middle, the bottom tier two. Eventually, we end up taking the tier two. We take the outpost and then we need to take uh, one to play for Rochan. If we're radiant, it's very easy. We just go from here to here. But if we're dire, you know, flip the map. Here you can see that I'm playing mid. I'm not playing bottom and I'm currently pushing in the bot lane with my spiders, as you can see here. Um, let's skip ahead a little bit because I think this game becomes a little bit iffy at some point. Um, and I'm going to show you guys how we recover this type of game. Because eventually, even if you do have an aura build like this, you may have to play the game in a way different manner. Um, and I'm just going to try to, you know, show you guys how we can make that happen. Now when you have the spider attack damage challenge, you can play really aggressive on side lanes. You can try to constantly like force the enemies. Here, look, we send our spiders on the tier 3. It's kind of dying. Look, they're not defending. Bottom tier 3 is dead. More spiders. Triple TP. We back off. We force reactions. This allows our team to go in top, get this tree and kill. And now look, the enemy team, they're, go they're about to be in like a pickle, you know? Uh, it's like a hard situation for them. There's Roshan spawning, but there's also spiders on bottom. Like, oh, oh what do we do? What do we do? SF is hitting Rosh. Rude is taking Rax. Range Rax gone. Melee Rax about to be gone. They're indecisive. And I know, in this position, I know, they're not defending their Rax. And we're hitting Rosh. So they must be coming to Roshan, right? So what I do is I already preemptively TP to the outpost. I could have done it even earlier, like here. I, I should be TPing earlier. But I'm TPing already before Roshan spawns because I'm like, guys, they're not defending the racks. They're coming to you. So I come here. Now we're together. We're going to protect the Rosh. We're going to take the fight. We use our spells. We get to combine our shit. Lotus Orb on the Axe. Greaves. Vlad's Aura. We run in. We get to secure Rosh. They call GG. And like, this is just amazing. Like, you just play Brute, you try to play on your strengths, you need to understand, okay, how do we go from point A to B? How do we make it happen? What is the, you know, what is like the item build that we have to go for in order to achieve the most out of this game? Can we play for someone else? You know, can people use my auras? Boom, so we build auras. If that's not the case, if it's a bad game for spiders, maybe we need to build more for ourselves. Maybe we can go Mindless Aghanims, maybe we go E-Blade Dagon, or maybe there's even other builds that we need to try out. We're gonna play into the jungle. Like, once you take this over, you wanna start to branch out into the mid lane and maybe get one or two more webs on top. So here, what you can see, I'm gonna pressure the top tower. I kinda wanna force a glyph, just to like force some rotations here. I'm gonna go on the edge a little bit to try and force some stuff on him. Sadly, I'm a bit too low on mana. He just hit 6 when we go on him. But it's still a lot of pressure. We nearly kill him. We force him out. We took a third of the top tower, so this is pretty good. In the meantime, the other play we could go for is the mid play. But this is kind of okay. If we can now stack up some spiders, you know, we can try to go on top again. We try to force a glyph. We keep farming out the jungle. We can spread our spiders as well. In the meantime, the mid tier 1 fell. So we can keep playing here now. Try to pressure this so we can get the tier 2. They TP, we TP the Nation's Prophet. That's a 9 minute tier 2 tower with Broodmother. So basically, the Brood game plan, it's the same. Just that eventually, like, you eventually end up with the same thing. You want to do the same thing no matter which side you're playing on. If you're playing Radiant, take the tier 1, take the jungle. Eventually, you take the tier 2, you take the outpost, and you slowly migrate that pressure into wave clear, and then you want to go Roche. 
On Dire, you do the same thing, just that you have to flip the map at some point, meaning that you take the tier one, you take over the jungle, you take over the bottom tier two, you take the outpost, but now you need to move the webs towards here so that you can eventually do Roshan. It is important because Brood is very strong at taking that objective, which means you need to make use of it. If you want to be good at Brood, if you want to make the most of the hero, that is what you have to do. This looks pretty good. We take the bottom tier one, and now what do we do? Branch out to middle and branch out to bottom, you know? Have the webs ready for both. Split your stuff up. I have a sentry here. I want to check the high ground. This looks amazing. I sent myself another sentry so I can potentially have a look at here or here, depending on where I think it's possible. Here, I want to push in the lane again. I'm going to pressure the treant. Had I saved my spawn spiderlings for the kill, we probably would have killed them. But either way, we forced the guy out, which is the main point of what, what has to happen. Pressuring the bottom tier 2 is not very good right now because they have Sven who will just go here and they have a treant. So look at the line I draw. The line is to middle. I'm saying, hey guys, I want to slowly branch out to the mid lane. With that said, I hope that the second part of this Brood Educational can help you guys out a lot. Uh, with that being said, shout out to my partners over at Bitburger Null Null. And, you know, they just constantly support me. They also help you guys with making this, you know, the content possible. So give them a shout out, show them some love. And yeah, thank you guys for watching. I'll see you on the next one and enjoy. Bye bye.